morning. This is Pastor Rick, and I want to welcome you to the Sunday Forum for this Sunday, uh, June the 19th. And our topic is Luke's ministry to the traumatized. Luke here is the writer of the two-part story of Luke and Acts and how he's taking the stories of Jesus and he's bringing those to a town that had experienced great trauma on behalf of the Roman Empire. We're going to get into that story. This is really a story behind the story, but it's so important to know because Luke is addressing real people who had experienced trauma. And so we should not only be thinking about the biblical story here in Gerizim and the historical story of the trauma that this city experienced, but we can think about what we have been experiencing lately, right, in Buffalo, New York, in Uvalde, Texas, and in Ukraine with the Russian massacre of so many Ukrainians. So think not just biblically, but what Luke's trying to do is talking to those who've experienced trauma like so many of us have experienced in these days. And I want to thank especially Vicar Judith Jones. Uh, she is an Episcopal priest at St. Stephen and St. Luke's by the Sea Episcopal Church in Walport, Oregon for doing much of the research. I'm very grateful for it. So let's start with the story as it's told by Luke. Here, Jesus all of a sudden decides to go to the Gentile side of the lake. He's, always, he's already been on the Jewish side of the lake, right? In his own hometowns, for example. And there he's cast out, let's call them Jewish demons. And now he's gonna to go to the other side of the lake. He does not give a reason. Luke does not tell us why he made that decision. He goes through that rough ride with the boat where he shows his power over nature, over wind and waves. The disciples are amazed and they're sort of asking the question, well, if he has the power over wind and waves, what other powers does he have over what other forces uh, in this world? And of course, that will be answered then in Gerizim. There he meets this demoniac who's living in the tombs there, the public place, probably a cave where uh, people were, were buried. And there he casts out the demons. And the demons request, they don't want to go into this abyss. They would rather be thrown into the pigs. And Jesus says, fine, throws them into the pigs. And of course, the irony of all ironies, then the pigs actually end up in the abyss. They actually drown themselves at the bottom of the lake. That's the way the t story is told. And then this demoniac has been healed. He wants to be a disciple of Jesus. And Jesus says, you can be a disciple, but better stay here. Stay within your own town. Stay with your own people. Stay with your family and tell them of the great things that God has done for you. Okay, that's the way the story is told. Now here is where Vicar Judith Jones has done some historical work, especially reading from Josephus, one of the most famous historians of the Roman Empire, especially telling the story of Palestine and the Jewish wars. And we're taking here from uh, Josephus' work on the Jewish wars, volume four. And there he talks in the late 60s. Now remember, he's writing about what happens and the slaughter which is going to happen in Gerizim, this very town where Jesus does the miracle. But in the 60s, so 30 years after Jesus' death and resurrection, this army general for the Romans, this general and his name is Vespasian, he sent soldiers to Gerizim to put down a rebellion. And he just slaughtered. There was no grace here, there was no nuance and a thousand men are killed in this town of Gerizim. And not only a thousand are killed, but we know that um, he imprisoned their families, right, for supporting this uprising against the Roman Empire. He then, um, this General Vespasian, burned the whole city, and he then went on to attack some neighboring towns as well. After finishing this work, they go back, lay siege to Jerusalem, destroy the temple, 
And by 70, of course, then, yeah, Israel was back under the control of the Roman Empire. But it was done brutally. It was done with so much trauma, especially in this town of Gerizim. Now, why is that important? Well, Jesus, of course, didn't know about the slaughter, but Luke does. As this slaughter is taking place, Luke is writing his gospel. And so when he tells the story about this man who's demon-possessed in Gerizim, where just a few years before, just a few years before there had been this massacre, it'd be like writing a story now for those who'd experience Buffalo or Uvalde or those who had experienced the, the, the traumatizing effects of the brutality of Russian soldiers against the Ukrainians. Luke knows what's happened in Gerizim, and now he's going to preach this gospel. He's going to tell the story of Jesus so as to give comfort to those who have been traumatized in this town. And that's why Luke tells this story differently than the other gospels in a unique way because he knows about the trauma. He's not avoiding it. He says, actually, Jesus has the power over the demonic and can help those who have been traumatized in life. One last thing that we learn from history is this 10th Legion. That's the troops who were sent to put down the rebellion in Israel and in Gerizim. Uh, it was the 10th Legion Fritensis. Fritensis. And their banner, because every legion had this banner that they would hold up. On that banner were, can you guess, pigs. It sort of represented the 10th legion. And it was not only put on their banners, but it was put on coins and bricks. It was a symbol of those Roman legions. And again, when Jesus confronts this man, and says, the demons speak to Jesus. And Jesus says, who are you? They say, we are legion. Yes, that's referring to a number, that the man had many demons. Usually in a legion, there are 6,000 soldiers in the Roman Empire. But it's not just about the number. It's about linking the tragedy and the trauma and the demon possession that this man is going through with the violence caused by the 10th legion by legion. That's how Luke is understanding and framing this story. And the pigs, just one more element. So when the demons flee and go to the pigs and they are all drowned in the sea, you can imagine anyone from this town of Gerizim, in fact, all of Palestine, well, they took comfort in the humor of legion being destroyed, of legion not just the demons being destroyed. How do we then use this story like Luke does? How do we use the power of Jesus and confront trauma in our own day? We're very fortunate to have a, a licensed um, counselor here in our church, Jim Cooper's wife, Kathy Cooper. And I asked her this week, do people come to her with trauma and can counselors help them get through their trauma in ways that lead them to health? And so we now want to hear this short interview with Kathy Cooper right now. Uh, Kathy Cooper, welcome to the Sunday Forum. I'm really glad that you can join us this morning. Thank you very much. Uh, Kathy is a licensed uh, mental health uh, counselor. And because we're talking about trauma, I thought it would be so helpful to hear from you about how you address uh, people who come to you uh, experiencing trauma. But first, from what I hear, opportunities for counseling have really gone up, even skyrocketed over the last couple of years. Is that true? Yes. As counselors, we have been very busy these last couple of years with depression, and anxiety because there's been so many so much unrest and many of the things in life that we have relied on are being pulled away and there's a lot of violence and so many uncertainties do you also experience in your counseling practice uh, people who come to you who suffer from trauma or who have experienced trauma 
Yes, when people um, have distressing experiences, they can often have you know a lasting impact. And sometimes it becomes what I call big T traumas, mm. you know, that come from abuse or neglect or violence or a, a shocking occurrence or, or even loss. But sometimes there's little T tra traumas. And those are the things that are sometimes harder to work with but can be dealt with that are a result of small things that happen again and again that are disappointments so, or maybe like negative things or things that don't happen that we really wish would happen so if if someone comes to you with a small t trauma or a big t uh can you help them can you walk them through those devastating experiences absolutely and sometimes we do need to process those memories because they've occurred in the context of maybe a relationship or a situation and they need to be healed in that same way. But um, many times it's not so much what happens, but it's what we come to believe about ourselves and our light and our future and our relationship with God. And we develop these mistaken beliefs that we start carrying forward. And it causes how we live and how we react and how we interact. and. And so we take some time to really look at what are those beliefs that we're carrying forward because mm. this happened. Right. And so uh, we want to thank you again, Kathy, for joining us because some of these texts in the Bible are dealing with trauma. And it's good to see how you as a professional also address some of these same issues in your praxis. Again, thanks for joining us, Kathy. Thank you. Thank you, Kathy, for how you're helping uh, people through their trauma, whether it's big T or small T, uh, helping them uh, get hold of their stories so they can lead them to health. Here at Church too, we know that many people have experienced trauma, or maybe you know one, know someone in your family or in your friends, in your circle of friends who have experienced trauma. And here, like St. Luke, we don't want to avoid trauma, which by the way is easy to do because it's so painful. Uh, but we have resources here at church where you can turn and call up and receive those resources as a possible help in that situation. And so now we want to hear from Julie Basile, who works in our congregation to make those resources available to us. Uh, Julie? We're here with Julie Basile, who is our community care coordinator at Emmanuel. And Julie, we're talking about those who've experienced trauma. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering whether our resources like Stephen Ministry would be a good resource for those who are going through trauma or people in our church who know someone who's been traumatized by various events. Yes, I would like to start by saying that all of our members should know how important Stephen Ministry is in our church. That's the beginning stepping stone, is to address with Jesus and reading the Bible together, things like that. That's the opening way to assist all of our members with crisis. But secondly, and very importantly, we will have a list, and I am working with the community, with the Alzheimer's Support Network, with David Lawrence Center, um, with the Collier County Medical Society, to develop a referral line when people need professional assistance with that trauma. So if you're going through trauma here at Emmanuel or you know someone, then you can call you, Julie, yes. right here at Emmanuel, and you yes. can plug them into resources in the community or here at the church. Absolutely, yes. Thank you, Julie, you're for welcome. the ministry you provide. You're welcome. Thank you, Julie. So if, again, you know someone who's experienced trauma, uh, we want to help here at church because we want to take the lead from St. Luke. St. Luke tells the story of Jesus, that Jesus has the power over wind and water, over nature, but also over the demonic. Those who have struggled with traumatizing experiences often struggle like with those demons. And Jesus can be victorious. And he gives us professional resources and spiritual resources, indeed, so that we can deal with trauma and be victorious ourselves. And so please join us at the Sunday Forum at 1015, where we'll discuss all the traumas that are going on all around us 
and what help we can provide with the story of Jesus. We thank St. Luke, we thank Kathy and Julie for their assistance today as well. Thanks for joining us. Bye-bye now.